are watching T Radio V, Radio in TV. Welcome to the Poe Show, broadcasting live from T Radio V in Hollywood, California. This is where we elevate the creative cult. This is where the creatives can be seen. So thanks for tuning in and thanks for seeing them. I'm Poe. If you didn't know, that's my name. Okay, today is Leap Year 2016. Uh, so leap on over and celebrate Leap Year at Velveteria. If you haven't been there, that's a cool place. Uh, it's the Museum of Velvet Paintings. 711 New High Street, Chinatown, Los Angeles. They'll sign your doctor's note for, from the boss and your resignation letter too. These aren't my words. I'm just sticking them. Call in sick and, sick and party with the truants. Take this job and shove it and go on over to Velveteria. Did you guys get those things? There we go. There's two. Yes. Yes, shove it. Okay, Sunday, March 6th, International Women's Day. I have to change my pace here a little bit. The UN Women, USNC SoCal chapter will celebrate the accomplishments of women from around the world. With food, film, guest speakers, and great conversations, and I, Poe, will be interviewing Jessica Bookleitner. I'm super excited about this. She's awesome. Okay, this is about 50 women, an anthology she compiled with candid stories of women's lives from Africa and Europe. There will also be talks on Latin American women artists whose intense works have been displayed in prestigious galleries. A terrific program, Music in Common, which brings together young people from diverse ethnic and religious backgrounds through the universal language of music and more. A silent auction will be held offering women-made original art and designs. For more info, I had the link, but it was, it was too much to handle. I couldn't deal with it. So Google UN Women USNC SoCal, and you'll get to where, to where you need to go. Because, of course, it's a ginormous... Um, website and that's a little part of the website. Okay, there's that. Okay, today. Breathe, Bo, breathe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm gonna drink for sad. a second. <sighs> okay, I'm drinking beer today because I'm with the boys. Okay, today we're gonna talk about sound. The sensation produced by stimulation of the organs hmm, of hearing by vibrations transmitted through the air or other medium, but more specifically music is what we're talking about today. And here in the studio with me today, I didn't tell these guys which one was which, but a man who devotes his life to music, the proprietor, design, engineer of home record pickups, songwriter, and recording studio session musician, Joshua Hernandez. Woo! How's it going? Woo! Okay. And then this other guy, everybody already knows. A the, man the we all know and adore. A renaissance man of many creative endeavors, including sound, and of many super hot women. The soul within the machine, Brian Lynch. Ooh. <laughs> Where's, my gold clap? Where's my gold? Ooh, good. Oh, great. Where's his clap? <laughs> Thank you. Give Brian the clap. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Again? <laughs> Again. <laughs> oh, this is going to be bad. This is going to get hairy. Yeah. Okay. Too late. Speaking of which, I've manscaped a little bit before I came here. Wow, look at you. You clean up good. I try to. I pretend I'm going to court right now. <laughs> this is not court. That's terrible. The Po show in court. That's an oxymoron. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, let's talk. What do we want to talk about? Mm, well. Let's talk about sound. Okay, what do you think about sound? I love it. Mr. I love it. <laughs> Mr. Hernandez. <laughs> uh, you live, live it, you love it, you I, love it and live I, it? I can't live without it. And the sound of high gravity alcohol. Oof. I know. Every, everybody can hear it out there, which is weird. 
Um, well, here's okay. making bad decisions together. <laughs> I like making bad decisions with Brian Lynch. He's like the king of making Me bad too. decisions. If, if I ever make bad decisions, it's normally it's with It's normally with him? Only with him. Oh, it's only with him. <laughs> and bad decisions okay. is a relative term because we do some stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay, so Joshua <laughs> is um, the uh, owner of Home Wrecker Pickups. Which is kind of funny if you don't know what it is. I know. It's a controversial name. I really like it. I, I like it. Homewrecker is is pretty cool. I wouldn't say it's a nickname, but... Are you a homewrecker? Do you really want to get into the story of why you, know you know the have <laughs> the label name? <laughs> Actually, good. it was a product I designed uh, with a previous company. Oh, really? I actually... How come I didn't find that in all my creepy little stocking? Ooh. I'm yet to see what you're I do have. Me. I do have a little quote here. Uh oh This was from way back. This was before it all got, like, started. You said, I should make a living out of what I love to do and what I'm good at. <laughs> Obvious. Exactly. <laughs> I said that? That's probably <laughs> when I left the corporate world. No, but what's funny <laughs> is some people never get that light bulb. It's... It's sad, but it's true. Or they don't, you know, they don't want to leap, that leap was a, off the... Probably a eureka moment of making a money-making hobby into a career. It's well, an epiphany. It's almost a religious experience. Yes. That's the only way to do it. And you've been there ever since. You did what you, you, you did the right thing, obviously. Duh. Um, I did a few belly flops. Oh, and way. you also <laughs> said, um, all in all, guitar, bass, repair, customization is what I truly love to wake up in the morning to do. Yes. He's the real deal, guys. He cares about sound and not just sound, but um, the all of the, all of the, what's the word? All Inerds. of the variations of sound, right? Inerds, uh all the varieties, all the options, variables, uh, improving people's tone day by day. That's so crazy just what you do. Making actually. a living, being a nerd. And, and you know what? He's not bullshitting. I've been living with just living with this gentleman for about a month now, and this guy's like a brother to me. And he seriously goes to sleep working on these damn things and wakes up and works on it. And them. works on them. Yeah, yeah bass and the strings. I have lines on my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, like this, like this morning. He woke up at five. Oh, I got oh, home, at, I got home at, five. at five. I got home at five thirty. <laughs> all I could think of and was and I was waiting <laughs> all night for you, <laughs> up all night for you. And I took out the trash, so I'm a good boy. Uh, okay, now you got to hear about that. <laughs> now we got to hear about that. Uh, right? No complaints. Right? Are you are you a terrible roommate, Brian? Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay, at least he admits it. It's tolerable. <clears throat> I'll take the very. Bad. Okay, so. Um, I wanted to show this. This is a video. Um, it's for an application for Alan Alda's 2016 Flame Challenge. After reviewing hundreds of questions submitted by children from around the world, the burning question in this international contest, now in its fifth year, is what is sound? Great question. Really great question. This challenge engages scientists to communicate familiar yet complex concepts to 11-year-olds, or in words that <laughs> Polina can understand, <laughs> and is judged by 11-year-olds around the world. The idea is to urge scientists to communicate more clearly. So we're going to show you this video, and you're going to like it. Hey, everybody. My name is Jason. I am a musician and record producer, and I love sound. Um, I work with sound every day. I love to capture it with microphones. I love to manipulate it with all this fancy equipment here. And uh, today I'm here to explain to you, uh, scientifically speaking, what is sound. And um, the most simple explanation is Sound is the vibration of anything with mass, and that could be anything solid, liquid, or gas. And uh, for example, we think most commonly of sound in terms of what we hear, and we hear things in the air. Air is gas. You can measure the amount of gas of air in this room. And uh, in fact, if you were to remove the gas from this room, the air, um, <laughs> uh, other, I would have a problem with that. But also, you wouldn't be able to hear me. Um, even if you were standing right there holding your breath, I could set off an explosion here and, and you wouldn't hear anything because there's nothing for it to... Sound needs to travel through something. So uh, how does this work? How do we hear sound? Um, 
Well, in air, uh, in a gas, uh, if you clap your hands, let's say, you create a pressure wave uh, that spreads out through the gas in this room. And uh, that wave we call very cleverly a sound wave. And so that sound wave pushes against everything in this room, including your ear. And uh, when it travels, when the air travels into your ear, that, that pressure wave, the sound wave, it presses against something in your ear called the tympanic membrane. It's a little flap of skin inside your ear. We also call it the eardrum. And uh, it shakes it, it makes it vibrate. And we can measure two things with the eardrum. One of, uh, one of the things it measures is how fast it shakes. And uh, if it moves really fast, that corresponds to small frequencies in the air and uh, you get the higher pitch sounds or if it, if it moves slower, you get the lower, the lower sounds. And uh, it also measures volume. Volume is how much it moves, not how, not how fast, but how far it moves every time a wave hits it. So, and we call that volume. And uh, the louder the sound, the more air it pushes. In fact, if you've ever um, been in a thunderstorm and you heard you know, a thunderbolt near you, you, you'll actually see it shake the windows. That's the sound pressure. That's the air pressure traveling through. And it's, it's so strong, it actually you know, shakes the house. Um, a really good way to think about this, there's an experiment you can do actually, where uh, if you have a swimming pool and you go out and you drop like a pea, a little, a little something tiny into the pool, and you'll hear a tiny little high-pitched plop sound, and you'll see little waves go out. And those waves will eventually, if you watch them, they'll eventually go and they'll touch every part of the pool. They'll spread all the way across the pool. Um, now if you go out with a, like a watermelon <laughs> and you, uh, you drop that in the pool, um, you know, it makes a big splash. And, but after the splash goes away, you'll notice that there's big waves going and they same thing. They go out across the whole pool. And the exact thing, same thing happens in the air. Uh, every part of the air moves. And just like the air in the water, the, you see the tiny little ripples correspond to that high, high sound. Whereas the, the, the watermelon, when it makes the big waves, the deep sounds, you, you'll, you'll actually see the waves. They're big. They're like a foot or two long as they travel. And the louder sounds you, are deeper. You'll see the waves. They're not only long, but they're bigger. And uh, it's the exact same thing with how the air presses against your ear. Uh, so that's it. That's, that's the basic. That's how sound works. And um, I hope you guys enjoy all the beautiful sounds in the world as much as I enjoy making them. Okay, so that was Jason Achilles Mazillus, um, an expert on sound. He's a musician, solo artist, and a guitarist for Al. He's been on the show a couple times but also an audio engineer and producer, the owner of Organic Audio Recorders, an analog digital boutique recording studio here in LA. Oh, sure. When he produces, uh, and he, where, where, he produces and records a number of bands. I don't have the big list of them, but there's quite a few. So he's a cool dude. So if you have something that, that he can help you with, and check it out. Okay. I think that was worthwhile because I love the way he um, describes sound because, um, like I said, oh, my headphones cutting out. Oh my God, you're a hot um, mess, Poe. I know. <laughs> I always like that term though, hot mess. Sounds <laughs> like sex. <laughs> we had a cover band called the Hot Mess Express. That's perfect. Except that sounds fast. We know some know women that can be stuff. described <laughs> that way. <laughs> All <laughs> aboard! <laughs> oh Jesus Lord! Oh Please Jesus not. Lord! Jesus and Lord! Oh fuck! Wow. <laughs> Wow. Okay, make sure you talk in the mic. I, I, Lick I'm it. Remember when you licked it? Yeah, the Suicide Girls were just on. <laughs> 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 they weren't. Gosh, when are they on? The, on Thursdays? Are they on Thursdays? The Suicide Girls. Are they Thursdays? Wednesdays. He did the W. That Could was pretty like this, great. Homie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Joshua. Yes. Okay, so um, let's see, where should we even start with you? I did that. Okay, this is pretty interesting, and you guys can totally both talk about this. Um, you started this kind of side business. Um, 
East Hills Instrument Repair. Oh, wow. You did your research. I know. I'm a creepy little stalker. Anyway, started as a hobby. I have the keys to his house. You can get inside <laughs> if you want. No, but, okay, so this is this is what he said. Started out as a hobby, just like I did hot riding engines and muscle cars as a teenager. Uh, applied this to guitars and basses. You probably have something to say about that. Oh, of <laughs> course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, he fixes my mistakes sometimes. Ooh. <laughs> and vice versa. Ooh, slap. <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 yeah, I don't even know where to begin with that. But, well, let me ask you, Josh. Uh, how about this? Uh, it's... I met Josh because I met Josh. You met him because um, well, I do photography and things like this. Yes, and you do. What it was was um, we're not going to mention any names, but I wanted to shoot somebody that he was with, and that didn't work out. But I found out that this cat was actually <laughs> that's kinda into funny. building pickups and things like that. You know, and I was like, holy shit! I need to meet this cat. And we ended up meeting, and it comes from being a gearhead. The, the way he you builds, guys both builds his instruments. You think the same. Exactly. You totally think the same. It's, 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 it's the way he builds his instruments, the way he's so picky about his tone and everything else is the same exact way we pick out car parts and blueprint engines and things like that. It's, it's about not being satisfied with the status quo well, kind of thing. Well, and um, there's actually, let's see. And I was blown away by his photography. And Are you into that too? Are you into photography? Oh, yeah. I always took pictures as a kid. I, I found uh, shoe boxes full of uh, disposable camera pictures that I thought I was a photographer. No, it's, that's what it gets down to. We, we think similarly, and it's, it's something about um, just taking things apart. It, it's finding the art within it. it it's the, the technical aspect of art, which is almost a terrible thing to say, but there's that heart and soul that you put into the time to make it work and make it your own unique voice. I can't find that one. And it's like a car you customize. It, it's you make it your car. No, yeah, like for like sure. the step side we saw today with yes. the uh, with the mags Corvette and the Corvette lights. lights. Oh, oh that thing on the hood. That was amazing. Oh, right? <laughs> God, there was Beautiful. somebody that said something about you that was pretty cool. And for whatever reason, uh, of course, I can't find it now. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. All these rumors. <laughs> Allegations. <laughs> um, <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny these allegations <laughs> as of yet. Fizz it, fizz uh, you it. are ready for court. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, who's the one who's dressed that's up here? Well, that's why I got the code on. I'm why hoping my probation okay, officer isn't going to see this. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So, said to be sonically, aesthetically different from what is currently offered. So, people say what you're, what you're doing is different, and people seem, people seem to like it. Yeah. I so, you hear that a lot? Yes. Uh, I know I'm onto something. I've been very um, reserved about it. Cause I'm just building a great foundation, brick by brick. You've been so reserved about it? Well, we're going to blow you out now. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's called a prolapse. Everybody's po a prolapse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus, that was good. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> no, you, I know you I should have. You set it up to make me sound smart. Thanks, Brian. I do what I, I, do what I can. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to a break real quick because I'm trying to stay on schedule. So we'll see you in a minute. And we'll talk more nonsense. Radio V, radio in TV. Previously on Vantage Point. It has made something that was local, international, and available and accessible, um, and it's democratized uh, the whole creative process. And uh, I think it's had a very positive outcome um, on many people who perhaps were tentative about creating now being uh, feeling the sense of encouragement to test that part of themselves to come out and uh, say oh, I, I'd like to try to do that to listen to the full interview and find more information visit our website at vantagepointradio.com previously on Vantage Point. We try to keep the same aesthetic across everything. You'll have some artists that paint these murals and then when they go into a gallery show they almost do a different style and I find that confusing. So we try to paint the same sort of stuff on a canvas with the same style as it would be on a wall and we paint it almost the same speed. You know when we paint mm. we don't take the precision and time we'll paint it as if we're painting it on the street. 
so that you still get the rush, you still get the same feel of it. Because personally, that's what I think people want to buy. If they see a wall on the street, they're like, I want to get some of that work. So you've got to keep that same energy going in the piece. To listen to the full interview and find more information, visit our website at vantagepointradio.com. Previously on Vantage Point. I look at typography as image. That's how I work. So a typographic piece is for me, it, it's a graphic piece, it's like a painting. Mm -hmm. So I always try to combine the type and the image in a way that it becomes one. He just likes to disturb the viewer. Uh -huh, I mean, okay. and, and it's, it's part of it that, it's, that he's not giving you what you expect. Mm -hmm. But he loves to surprise you or guide you in one direction and then if you think you have found your path in, he gives you another one. To listen to the full interview and find more information, visit our website at vantagepointberlin.com. Pointberlin.com. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. Okay, so that was Vantage Point Radio Berlin, which I try to give shout outs to because they're awesome. Okay, so Vantage Point is a radio show hosted by James Ballou. He's been on the show. He's an amazing artist, street artist, uh, muralist, an artist artist, and just a cool dude. Um, him and Tom uh, Otto64 interview artists in the post graffiti and urban contemporary art scene. They're both in Berlin. It's recorded in Berlin, Germany, and airs every other Monday from 3 to 4 p.m. on Berlin Community Radio and can be listened to anytime on their website, vantagepointberlin.com. So make sure you check those out. You can check out, I mean, there's just uh, the full shows. I think they're, hmm, I think they're like an hour long or 30 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour. Anyway, something cool to listen to because these artists are from all over our beautiful <coughs> Those, those shots were fucking amazing. I'm look, I'm stuck on it, looking at it. You know, did you meet James Ballou when he was here? No, no, no. I've been yeah. too goddamn busy to be uh, here. He's so great. Well, he's originally from D.C., okay. but he's been in Berlin for quite a while. Do Better you know? Than. Do you know him? Do you know his work? I, you know, I, he I, has I, the dreads. I, I can recognize mm -hmm. it. It's funny because uh, we were just. It's all, it's kind of cut cut up, mm -hmm. like broken, like mm, cut glass. It's I like it's something I know I've seen before, but I didn't know who actually did it. And it's mm -hmm. like, holy shit, this is good. It's good. Damn He's good. A brilliant, absolute brilliant artist. Okay, so tell me, tell me what this whole pickup <coughs> business is, well, Mr. Joshua. A pickup is basically um, how am I explaining it to an eleven-year-old? Uh, <laughs> a transducer that captures Can we dumb this down for a second? vibrations from stringed instruments. Over no, it's a microphone that picks up the string vibration, and I look at these microphones as something like a preset EQ, preset voicing like what you would find in your car stereo. Uh, say some have more mids, more bass, whatever. And I've done a lot of research over the years, and by accident, I found a very transparent uh, setting, to say. Transparent? Uh, voicing. So where it's very unforgiving. What does that mean? Um, it's not colored. It put, put the mic closer to your mouth. So I, can't hear oh, I can hear myself put loud. Put it in your mouth. <laughs> loud and clear. No, so what does that mean? You can, you can adjust it this way, too. Oh. Yeah. And, and uh, tighten it with the thingies. Okay, so anyway, um, so what does that mean? Um, it's pretty much my own voicing, I'd say. Um, after, like I said, after all these years of looking at other designs and finding that there's absolutely nothing special, it's, mm, you know. So you're not reinventing the wheel, you're just perfecting the wheel. Put yeah. more rubber on it. Or a new, or uh, less, or a new, a uh, place new or twist on it. Square wheels, or... Sorry. Low tech, high tone. I would call it low tech, high tone. Where it's you know it's a pyramid of technology. I mean, it's basically a I don't know how to say it. So <laughs> simply, it's a you're just wrapping 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 wire wrapping wire around the <laughs> magnet, connecting it with solder points. Hopefully, you don't break okay, it. Okay, but what's interesting using fucking is fucking lead is and it wire. It's an, lead it's an electrical signal, way. though. It's not the string. It's the vibration of the string. Yeah, it's an AC signal. Okay, so, okay, so that's we got to dumb it down for the 11 year old Poe. But <coughs> so I was no, because I, I mean, I didn't know. I, <coughs> I know what it does, but I didn't know. Like technically, I've never put thought into it. I play cello, but I don't have a pickup on it. Ah. I, at one point, I was going to, but I'm like, I don't want them this would be the man to ask. Fucking with my cello. <laughs> it's it's a voice. I think they all sound different. That's why everybody buys aftermarket parts, just like with cars. You know, different results, different performance things. I won't say performance issues, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, ooh, are we going? We're not going to go. We're there. not going to go there. 
Oh, I don't have performance anxiety. I know what kills. <laughs> <laughs> Strike hard, strike fast, strike often, all right? <laughs> Never let them see you sweat. <laughs> Not fast, though. <laughs> Never. Mm -hmm. mm. But well, it, fast, very slow. B b back into slow it. it it's, 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 like, it's like cars. And, but it, it's, you know, some people will buy something off the factory floor, and they'll will pay way too much money for it. Somebody might buy, buy a Corvette or something like that, and I can literally take something out of a junkyard for a fraction of the price and whip his ass on a track within three exactly. weeks. And what, what we're talking exactly. about here, what we're talking about here, though, is is sound. So some of part of that is preference. I mean, not that a car wouldn't be, but a lot of it is. Oh yeah. It's and the type of music you play, and the tones you want, how you're going to use, how you're going to use it, which is not so different from a car. Yeah. But it really is. Um, some people probably don't even hear a difference to what you're doing. A lot of times they don't, or um, a lot of customers uh, don't know what the hell they want, but they're willing to go through hell to get it. So okay, so those the are the people you got to work with. So that's why you're, you know, over your, over your uh, work sh workshop bench, <laughs> you're trying to figure <laughs> out what it is, how to make that happen. You're a problem solver. Yep, and um, like you said, getting a junkyard uh, vehicle to completely wipe all the, uh, say, the high end stuff out. I use pretty much. Frankenstrats or just piece together guitars. Frankenstrats. This motherfucker will sit there and have hi, like an artgasm over like some 1970s an spool of wire. I like these terms! <laughs> <laughs> this is doing for yeah, I, I have those all the fucking time. It's, it's great. Oh shit, wait, hold on. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's why they get all happy. Smoke. I have a cabinet full of uh, old <laughs> this old uh, magnet wire. Which has benzene in it, which well, is it, a permanent it would, marker it would be, smell. It would be a pile of shit to anybody else. And he's like, dude, you have to see what's in this box. And it's just a pile of fucking wire. Yeah, I'm the nerd but who goes to the circle store. The metallic compounds of it and the <laughs> thickness of it and everything about it makes his unique sound. He's making these pickups out of the goddamn original wires that are hard to you find. You sound like the Randy Parsons of pickups. Randy Parsons of pickups. <laughs> yeah, who's Randy Parsons? Oh, gosh. You, you want to dumb that down for a Crickets. second, Poe? Crickets. Oh, 11-year-old. He builds <laughs> guitars. Uh, by accident. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with a knife. With um, a <laughs> okay, so very cool. So, okay, I know what I wanted to ask you. So you were trying to explain your special little thing, which I didn't understand. But I found something that you're probably, like, I don't know if you've heard of it or if you just think it's ridiculous. That's a large packet of dirt. I was trying to <laughs> figure it's a out fucking dossier. figure out what you were going to talk about. Um, <laughs> optical pickups. What the hell is that? Do you know what that is? Okay. It says optical pickups are a fairly recent development that work by sensing the interruption of a light beam by a vibrating string, yes. usually an LED. It sounds like a theremin. That. Yeah. So that's Probably. fairly new. Is it? Does it? I haven't does gotten anybody. Any I haven't gotten into that. I know the bigger companies who have the I money wouldn't to think you would because it's like, it, it seems like it's kind of getting off track. But what it does say is these picks up, pickups are completely resistant to, resistant to magnetic or electric interference and also have a very broad and flat frequency, frequency response. Range. Well, in other words, they're quiet and they're claiming to be very open sounding and natural. Well, so that would be for not a whole lot of musicians. It would be for some musicians. Yeah, some guys are just plug and play. Some guys can just <laughs> use a Toys R Us guitar, okay, but those like the are cheapest parts, and make it sound good. Because I, I believe no, that's true. That is tone is in your true. fingers. No, you're, you're absolutely it, right. You know, it really is. It really is. No, you're absolutely right. It's not the machine. Even it's though I make it, that's the nuance. It's the true part of the nuance. I'll make some fancy stuff, but honestly, what's in my guitars is my old prototypes that are half working, sometimes intermittent, cut out. Maybe I'm too. Maybe I'm the uh, plumber with broken faucets in this house. Fucking yeah. story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I kind of prefer that. A lot of people are like, how come the guitars aren't souped up? Well, I kind of just want to play. The last thing I want to do is work yeah. on a guitar when I work on my guitar. Well, it seems like then you could, um, maybe you have more of a range of what can be done with it. If you, yeah, okay. We're going to cut for a break because we're trying to stay on schedule. So we'll be right back. See you soon. watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. We're going to get a little silly and we invite you to get silly with us. He gave me an award for most sarcastic. 
Did you kill the bitchy one? I think I'm just coming up. <laughs> I'm like 30 and super broke. I should try fix this. So I spent some money on a book that I didn't read. Did it, did, did it fix it? It didn't fix anything. <laughs> did it fix you, Claire? No, no, it definitely didn't fix me. I think the trick is to read the book. I'm tired to read people to sleep. No sex or any funny business. Oh, what's the whole thing if there's no sex? I love how immediately you had to qualify. <laughs> Harry Potter at 5 o'clock in the morning. Get read the stock out. book. That'll Can knock you out. That? That's better than smoking a bowl. Yeah. That's what I do when I can't sleep in the middle of the night. That's what you do anyway, right? <laughs> do they get high from second hand? One of my pugs does get high. I soft music. <laughs> I was like, maybe some Pink Floyd. Maybe. <laughs> you should try like some sort of journeying with her. Like you're yeah. walking across a field. You see, of our dog goes out. Wow. Doggy crows out, or just slip it under the table? <laughs> 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 like, I got a little lithium left over. Here. I think you should be aware of any drug that you're taking. And if you can't give consent, then you should not be given a drug. So you have your puppy sign something? Yeah. No, like fire? Eat all print. <laughs> I've got a new CD out now that I probably can't say the name of on the show. Oh, yeah, you can. I can say anything? Yeah, you just can't show your penis. <laughs> it's called Feminazi Cunt. I think they make bacon lube. Radio V. Radio in TV. Hey, welcome back to the Hollywood Poe Show. Poe Show. Poe Show, Poe Show. Okay, on March 3rd through the 6th, Think Space will be at Scope New York, 16th edition. 639 West 46th Street, New York, New York. That's booth B1. Okay, and get this. Featuring a solo show from Brian Vivos. Woo! This special presentation of new work is Vivos' first on the East Coast since 2012. The past year was significant for the artist, as I can attest to, with a hugely popular and sold-out exhibition, Matador. Did you make it to the Matador, Brian? I, I did not. Oh I've been working my ass off what too much. What a cool guy. God, I like him. Fucking A, right? But his work is so great. Okay, Matador was at ThinkSpace November 2015, and the launch of his first art book, Dirty Land, which I would love to have a copy of that. I need to get one of those. Um, the first publication released by ThinkSpace Editions. No this shit. is like a, that. yeah, right? Uh -huh. This is a 216 page. I'm going to sell to Brian. <laughs> this is a no, 216 take, take my, take my page <laughs> full color <laughs> monograph surveying 11 years of his work, or no, 18 years of his work. Fuck, how do you do that? You're condensing your entire life. Basically, yeah. Fuck that. Basically, <laughs> I love his images. They're so great. Okay, awesome. Scope New York's convenient, well appointed venue. We'll host 60 international galleries with special events, performances, and talks. Tickets and full details can be found at www.scope-art.com. Okay, and Wednesday, Brian, you could probably come to this. Wednesday, March 9th at 8 p.m., Jason Achille, Achilles Mazillas with his first solo, or not solo, or his first show of 2016 featuring a set of all instrumental music from his forthcoming, still brand new album, Come Down. So come on down to Silver Lake Lounge 2906 <laughs> West Sunset Boulevard, Los Angeles. Okay, so the lineup. Oh, the kitty's going to come in soon. Did That's were you I doing kitty? Okay. Yeah, I was. The lineup, 11 p.m., Jason Achilles Mazillus. It's kind of fun to say. You super, said 11 p.m.? I might be actually. 11 p.m., yeah, it's Wednesday? next Wednesday. Yeah. 10 p.m., Sit Kitty Sit. That's what say I saw. It. Say it. Wait, Sit Kitty Sit? Do the kitty? You just did the kitty. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you. That sounds like your kitty in heat. Exactly. That's all yeah. I know now. <laughs> that's all he knows. That's the only. That's the only sound he knows of the kitties is the one in heat. Okay, 9 p.m. Hey, she likes to scratch and bite. Hell. Yeah, no she complaints. does. No complaints. You know. <laughs> you I, like that, I, right? I, you know what? I can't even bear to spare. Because I might lose all that attention now. He's a sick man. No, I'm just torturing her. Sick man. <laughs> he likes the attention so he doesn't get his kitty spayed. No, it's terrible. I need to get her ass in there and get her under a knife. 
Oh, put it that way. It's oh. Like a 24 7 catnip high. That's what she's on. Okay. And we got a dog. Okay, let me finish with this introduction. Sorry, sorry. Not introduction, but okay. Okay, 9 p.m., Alexa Merrill. 8 p.m., Luke Janella. Featured musicians joining Jason R. Brian McConnell on keys, Keith Larson on drums, Elliot Larango on bass, so check it out. I'll see you there, actually. Okay, so now we can talk more about kitties. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like she's gargling something, which that, that, frightens that's me. That's kind of a, uh, is it like is that a ca- calico thing? She they says, do? no, I just do, I just do oral. <laughs> I don't want kittens. I just want. Is that where the gargling comes in? I'm so bad. I'm ruining my show. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think we're ruining your show. It's like, uh, no. you know, it's your show. So <laughs> you're ruining your own show. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, what are we going to talk about now? Besides hmm. kitties. Besides kitties. Um, okay. You know what? Um, what Joshua, start? you have like five different kinds of pickups that are popular. Well, you probably have more than that, but that's what I, the st- freaky little stalker found, was Uh-oh. five of them. You know, I actually got a question for him, because when was the first time you took apart a guitar? 11 years old. 11 years Could old. Could you put it back together? No. I had that problem, um, too. They well, took me to a psychiatrist. Well, it's really funny, as I actually have the guitar that I put back together and had extra parts. So, like, the first time you take apart a carburetor. Oh, no, no. T- <coughs> first time you take part of fucking engine you're like oh where does this go oh fuck do not start it oh, those are rods oh god oh. oops oops my bad oh shit. in a gasket shit happens forgot about that too um yeah i was 11 years old um i wait found how, how many times have you shocked yourself i can tell you about the first time i shocked myself which sparked my fascination for electricity sparked 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 literally figuratively <laughs> yeah um sorry big al um my little brother was crawling uh, on the floor. I'm, we're three years apart, and there was a big vacuum in the middle of the, you know, living room. So I unhooked that cable, unraveled it, hit the big toggle switch, and those vacuums, those older vacuums, drew some serious amperage. Oh, it was like the yeah. fucking Hoover that had like the Space Race yeah. logo yes. on it. There you go. And you know, I yeah, waited. You can clean everything up. <laughs> and I waited for him to crawl up to the vacuum out of curiosity. No. And I was, you know, not looking where I was plugging it into the wall. And my finger was touching one of the prongs, and I pretty yeah. much zapped myself. It felt like a million ants stinging me. Wow. And, of course, it's exactly what it feels like. Did uh, you suck your brother up? Well, <laughs> I think I was more shocked and scared than him. It was actually really funny. And I remember... Uh, so how... he was? He's younger or older? He's younger. Oh, okay. So he was like... It's probably like eight? one or two. Oh. Oh, yeah. you were really little. Yeah. <laughs> and after that, I was like, oh, okay, respect. But this stuff is cool. <laughs> how does it work? Yeah. And your mom's going to be like, otra vez, otra, otra vez. Te dije. I told you. Hace una vez más. Why didn't you stop me? <laughs> I wanted you to learn a lesson. So did your mom speak Spanish mm-hmm. or Italian? Was she Italian? Or my mom's Russian, Italian. Russian, Italian. Kind of knows a little bit of everything. She was married to my father who's Mexican for X amount of years. So he was only me- Mexican for X amount of years. No, no, she's <laughs> married to him. <laughs> I, I, I was keeping my mouth shut about that. <laughs> <And> <laughs> that doesn't and quantify and right and now. And you're yeah, from you're Mex Ital- Mex uh, Irish, mm-hmm. Mex Irish. Mm-hmm. You guys are both Mex eyes. Well, yeah, we, 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 <laughs> we equal one. <laughs> we equal one full beaner when we're together. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's the fucking facts. It is <laughs> That's funny. Whatever I don't understand, he gets. But he doesn't understand, I get. It's, it's 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 pretty good uh, um, don't synthesis you have a of ideas. And don't like you have that. A, a a band? Do you have a band? I'm a ghost Mex- right now. Mex Italian, Mex Italian me- music. Yeah, well that's that's like my publishing thing. I, I do a lot okay. of behind the scenes session work, so I play guitar for um, anywhere from just you know major labels. All you do lots of stuff. Yeah, you have to have twenty hustles in this town if you want to work for yourself. Yeah. You know, I can, you know, work a nine to five and make some other asshole money, but. Oh, you know what? You said something like that, and I'm going to find it because it was so great. <coughs> it's a quote. Um, asshole money. I love it. Oh, no. This is so great. <laughs> this is okay. This is so great. Come on, Polina. Come on. You can do this. Okay. Get, get it's it. It's a lot of dirt. Okay. <laughs> So this is all this missing is a fucking paper clip with your photo on it. Right see all, <laughs> the, like see the the all the highlights, folder. but I, I don't know what's what. No, okay. you, need, you need the low lights. <laughs> I know, the low lights. Okay, so this is one of Joshua's quotes. You either have large scale goals, dreams, and ambitions, or you end up working for um, some asshole who does. Very true. <laughs> of 
course it's true. That's what you said. Very true. You also said, uh, I don't know if you said this, but this is what I found. It might have had a, a name behind it, but I lost it somewhere. Entrepreneurs are simply those who understand that there is little difference between obstacle and opportunity and are able to turn both to their advantage, which that I'm all for that. Is an Italian, ooh, what's his an name? An Italian, ooh. It's, uh, uh, 1600s, I think that quote went back to. It's a really old one. Uh, do you, was it was it um, was it named or no? Sometimes it, nobody knows. Niccolo, who. no, maybe. Some Niccolo fellow. Somebody. I can't take credit for that one, but I can relate. Oh gosh, right? Because yeah, I truly believe obstacle is a form of opportunity, and you have to turn it to your advantage. Okay, and you're also you're also a songwriter. <laughs> Sounds niche esque, I think. Yeah, like I said, behind the scenes, I have my own groups where, you know. Uh, but I do other people sing your songs that you wrote? I won't mention. I have some stuff in the uh, in the pool right now waiting to be placed. You'll hear it or be dancing to it eventually. And do you put your name on it or no? Well, uh, it's a collaborative effort, so uh, we've all pitched in. Uh, I do guitars or bass drums. I'm, I'm not a singer at all. I can do melodies, but I don't like to sound my own voice. So and I like you're, And you're a sound dude, so... If you don't like the sound of your voice, you're probably not going to use it. It's a pretty good judgment if I don't like it. <laughs> okay. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back, and we're going to wrap it all up in copper wire. Okay. See you soon. Ooh. <laughs> I like the sound Shit of this. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> we could touch on main stuff there. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. We're doing spoken word, spoken song, but we talked about photographers, we talked about yeah. painters, we talked about dancers, yeah. we talked about uh, Shakespeareans, regular actors, poets, writers. Art on any level, whether it's music, visual art, um, writing, you know, any kind of creative endeavor, that there's, there's a value to it. We merged the worlds together, the art world and the music world. You know, they say everything is with the bright brain, the visionary, the imagination. So what we need to do is, as spirit beings who are, have limitless potential, is to tap into the left brain. When you improv, you're completely connected to the music. from the opposite direction. I started with the best of the best. <laughs> exactly. Right? I started with uh, Versace and Armani and Yves Saint Laurent. It's kind of becoming like the rock star thing to do is uh, instead of being in a band and going on tour, we just go on tour to paint walls. And it is a challenge for us how to be true to ourselves and at the same time be able to, to pay bills, be able to, to, to do it as a vocation habit. The industry has changed. We have, we have gaming, we have animation industry. I started my career as, as an animator, a Disney character animator. I figure drawing instructor at uh, Noman School of Special Effects. Create a sculpture within a sculpture within a sculpture. You can create things that unfold, you can create things that work and walk around, things like that. So people's imagination is gonna, just going to be ignited. Yeah, I was a professional stage actor for eight years in New York. What was weird is that when I was spinning around, I literally felt, I started laughing uncontrollably, and I felt like I was going insane. Creativity and art in all shapes and forms is a way of communication with everybody. It, it, you know, it goes through language barriers and racial barriers and everything. Radio V, radio in TV. Hey, welcome back to the Poe Show. 
<laughs> We're talking about sound. That sounded terrible. Um, okay, so in um, initially though, you started. I mean, you you started with uh, a lot of um, problem solving, like repair stuff, right? Yes, yes, lots. I mean, it, that is such a great way to start anything. Is on the like trying to figure out how how to fix something. <laughs> well, the best way is I I messed a lot of my own guitars up yeah. before I even was you know allowed myself to work on other people's guitars. Did you go back and fix them when you knew how? Yeah, and then sometimes I had to pay somebody else to do it. Uh, and then when I paid somebody else to do it and I was you know eighty percent there and they screwed it up, that was a straw that broke the camel's back, and I pretty much went gung ho after that and really figured out what I did wrong. But yeah, uh, of course there was a passion for it. If you would have, who cares? It was an obsession, you know. Oh. Very much an obsession. <laughs> that's a step above passion, by the way. And, it's not and that's cheap. usually illegal. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> legal things come out of I obsessions. If I could fix a car, I could fix a damn guitar. Yeah. So you, you're a real um, technical, um, hands on, manual kind of person, which is probably why you're so successful with, with what you're doing. And you also have the ear. So you're like, okay. I need to tweak this like this much to make this happen or wrap it five more times to yes. make this happen or whatever. I went, I went through a stage of where I was super meticulous and I forgot about the art of playing. Now, like I said, I, I have all my old Okay, so what does that, that mean? Seems like uh, you con you contradicted yourself. Right no, no, no. I, I can be right? very meticulous if I need. Well, it's overthinking. Overthinking, oh. yeah. Oh, instead of, yeah. Over f instead of feeling. Yeah, instead of like looking at all the variables, instead of uh, just okay. getting okay. the job done, you spend more time tweaking things than actually, you know, and That's how you get perfection, though. Yeah, I know what I want now, or maybe I just settle. Well, you, you, there, there's... That's a fine line. Uh, God, it's there a fine there line. really is a fine line. When I walk let's, go, line. let's go back to carburetors. There'll be mechanics that'll bring out a fucking tachometer and a air fuel meter kind of thing. They'll, they'll spend Do you see my they'll eyes glazing over? And a dwell. <laughs> I can put gas in my car and some oil and maybe some <laughs> antifreeze. But don't put oil okay. in the gas. But, but there will be somebody <laughs> no. that goes to the school for this to be an automotive technician and they know all this shit about the stoichiometric mixture of But fuel, they don't air. feel what's going on, huh? And yeah. just, just through experience, trial and error, breaking shit left and right. It's it's. Uh, we were digging with your carburetor yesterday. Yeah. I just grabbed my fucking key and I'm like, all right, fire it up. Go over to like the rear end of the car where you have your exhaust pipes. All I have to do is just go. Pretty much smell it. All right. Well, it's a little bit lean. So fuck it. Turn the screw. See what happens. Kind of thing. Oh wow, and it's really lean. Oh yeah, it ran out <laughs> oh, of fuel. Yeah. We ran out of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> like it. That's pretty lean. <laughs> yeah. Damn lean. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then we had to do the walk of shame. Um, but the gas can. The walk of Chevy. <laughs> the walk of Chevy. Of Chevy. <laughs> is that the same? <laughs> is mm -hmm. that the same thing? Not to fix the flow to my gas tank. So I, I usually use a uh, palito, like a windowsill stick, and I put palito. it in my gas tank. And palito. Nah, uh, uh, that's how I judge. Ah, oh, need two more gallons. Okay, so you um, uh, you also said the beauty of being an active player is I get to put my own product to the test in studio and live situations. So Abs you do that often. So you're Absolutely. like, okay, this could use like. And Absolutely. Do a tweak or I do have a thing or rotating prototypes in my instruments because if it fails, it's on me. And I put it through. I even I one time I went as far as a uh, a friend a friend was married and you know that just got married the dragging the cans behind while I attached a set of pickups there. <laughs> one survived. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> it was unnecessary. It had nothing to do with any of my sound testing, but. Thought it was really funny. Okay, so 2012 Indie Music Channel Best Rock Recording. Yes, we swept that year. I produced a song for an artist named Diamante. And yeah, that was these fun. are things that you wouldn't say about yourself. See, this isn't this weird because you would never say, oh, yeah, I did this. Yeah, I've done, I got about seven of those under my belt. Uh, did 2013 as well. Best Rock Producer, Best Rock Song. God, I'm getting bad fun. at my creepy little stalking i didn't get that i can give you the key to the house oh man that's, that's can i look under his bed <laughs> when can i hide under his bed <laughs> the ss oh man oh no that's not even things are getting that. tricky okay so you're gonna have to fight the pit bull for him yeah i have a pit bull weenie dog that's the a pit bull weenie dog pit bull weenie dog the t-rex like, that's exactly what i feel <laughs> like on the show sometimes <laughs> Did I see the? Oh, I did see the pit bull weenie dog. Fucking of course, Rocky, Rocko yeah, Rocko. Rocko. Oh, he's awesome. Hey, he's a hey, shithead. You need to get oh, him some that's trash the, pickers. That's the weenie dog, and the weenie dog <laughs> is the shithead. The weenie dog. The weenie dog. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Josh, what's coming up for you? Mm, let's see. Uh, come on, come uh, on. New 
websites. Oh, I'm almost done with these new websites. Um, I have an EP coming out in the next three months. Possible summer tours. Keep us posted on all that stuff, and I'm gonna I'll blab about it on the show. Definitely. And you have to be back on the show. Yeah, I'd love to. Okay, so what's your what's your website name? Homewreckerpickups.com. Uh, I have, I have hwpickups.com. That's the website I have up for legitimacy right now, but the one I'm actually overhauling uh, is homewreckerpickups.com. And then I have my personal website, which is ghostguitarist.com. I tried to go there, and it was down. Check it uh, out. Splash page. Slacker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Lynch, where can we find you? Oh, fuck. At work later. <laughs> At work later. Are you really working later? Yeah. Okay. Anybody who's been on the show or is going to be on the show, blah, 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 all the stuff that I always say. What? Puzzlepiece.com. Go there. And on my website, there's lots of stuff. There's all the shows that are archived on there. You can also go to all my social media junk. So click on that. Like it all. And you can see every day what's going on on the post show. So keep tuning in. Let's see. Who do I have next week? I have. Who do you have? Who do I have? I have an amazing artist. Artist, artist. Um environmental kind of artists, street artists, urban artists. It's going to be good. Courtney Carter's going to be back. Sounds like vandals. I like it. And Johnny Terajosu and some others. So check it out. It's going to be good. We're going to talk about the L.A. River a little bit. Okay, oh, see you next week. You are watching T-Radio V, radio and TV.